I invite you to join me with the confession and forgiveness. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God who was in the beginning, who makes a dwelling among us, who covers us with justice and mercy. Amen. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another. God of goodness and loving kindness, we confess that we have sinned against you and our neighbors. We have turned away from your invitation to new life. We have turned away from the lowly and downtrodden. In your abundant mercy, forgive us our sins, those we know and those known only to you. For the sake of the one who came to live among us, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Hear the good news of peace and salvation. God forgives us all our sins, not through our own work, but through Jesus Christ, made known to all people. With all who come to the manger, rejoice in this amazing gift of grace. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Let us pray. Almighty God, you wonderfully created the dignity of human nature, and yet more wonderfully restored it. In your mercy, let us share the divine life of the one who came to share our humanity, Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Well, welcome to Abiding Presence Lutheran Church, a place of grace where all are welcome. Our mission is to seek God and serve others. Welcome to everyone from a distance. Thank you for joining us remotely for worship this week in this unusual holiday season. We're really grateful that you've chosen to stay connected to this community, even as um, remotely in the comfort of your own home. We hope that during this Christmas season, you're still finding ways to connect with friends and loved ones, even as we stay physically distanced as a church, as we strive to keep everyone safe during this pandemic. I'd like to give us all a heads up about what to look for as we're entering the new year. We will continue to offer Monday coffee with Stefan and Steve beginning on Monday, January 4th at 9 o'clock a.m., this group meets on Zoom every Monday morning at 9, and it's an opportunity to discuss the service and the sermon from the Sunday prior, and also to spend time together in God's Word as we look forward to next week's Gospel lesson. So we'd love for you to join us at some time in this future, and uh, to remember to bring some coffee with you when you come. We're also going to have two new adult faith formation studies starting in January. Um, on Tuesday evenings at 6 o'clock, Chip is going to be starting a new study about the overall narrative of the Old Testament. And on Wednesday evenings at 6 o'clock, a new study titled Jesus Outside the Lines will explore how we can look beyond divisions in our 
society and our world to seek truth even amidst conflict. If you're interested in joining either of those studies, we'd love for you to reach out and let us know. You can find more information about all of these on our website, aplc.org. And now let us turn our hearts and minds to the hearing of God's word. The first reading is from Isaiah, chapter 61. I will greatly rejoice in the Lord. My whole being shall exude in my God. For he has clothed me with the garments of salvation, and he has covered me with a robe of righteousness. As a bridegroom decks himself with a garland, and as a bride adorns herself with her jewels, for the earth brings forth its shoots, and as a garden causes what is sown in it to spring, to spring up, so the Lord God will cause righteousness and praise to spring up before all the nations. For Zion's sake, I will not keep silent, and for Jerusalem's sake, I will not rest, until her vindication shines out like the dawn, and her salvation like a burning torch. The nations shall shall see your vindication, and all the kings of your glory, And you shall be called by a new name that the mouth of the Lord will give. You shall be a crown of beauty in the hand of the Lord and a royal diadem in the hand of your God. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God.
The second reading is from Galatians chapter 4. When the fullness of time had come, God sent his son, born of a woman, under the law, in order to redeem those who were under the law, so that we might receive adoption as children. And because you are children, God has sent the spirit of his son into our hearts, crying, Abba, Father. So you are no longer a slave, but a child. And if a child, then also an heir through God. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. Please join us in singing the gospel acclamation. The Holy Gospel according to St. Luke, the second chapter. When the time came for their purification according to the law of Moses, Joseph and Mary brought Jesus up to Jerusalem to present him to the Lord. As it is written in the law of the Lord, every firstborn male shall be designated as holy to the Lord. And they offered a sacrifice according to what is stated in the law of the Lord, a pair of turtle doves or two young pigeons. Now, there was a man in Jerusalem whose name was Simeon. This man was righteous and devout, looking forward to the consolation of Israel, and the Holy Spirit rested on him. It had been revealed to him by the Holy Spirit that he would not see death before he had seen the Lord's Messiah. Guided by the Spirit, Simeon came into the temple, and when the parents brought in the child Jesus to do for him what was customary under the law, Simeon took him in his arms and praised God, saying, Master, now you are dismissing your servant in peace according to your word. For my eyes have seen your salvation, which you have prepared in the presence of all peoples, a light for revelation to the Gentiles and for glory to your people Israel. And the child's father and mother were amazed at what was being said about him. Then Simeon blessed them and said to his mother Mary, This child is destined for the falling and the rising of many in Israel, and to be a sign that will be opposed, so that the inner thoughts of many will be revealed, and a sword will pierce your own soul too. There was also a prophet, Anna, the daughter of Phanuel of the tribe of Asher, she was of great age, having lived with her husband seven years after her marriage, then as a widow to the age of 84. She never left the temple, but worshipped there with a fasting and prayer day and night. At the moment she came and began to praise God and to speak about the child to all who were looking for the redemption of Jerusalem. When they had finished everything required by the law of the Lord, they returned to Galilee, to their own town of Nazareth. The child grew and became strong, filled with wisdom, and the favor of God was upon him. The Gospel of the Lord. Whenever I hear this story about Jesus' presentation in the temple, I don't picture it happening in the actual temple in Jerusalem, because I don't really have a picture in my head of what that looks like. So instead, I always imagine this happening inside of like a giant cathedral of sorts. Um, and I've actually had the chance to visit several cathedrals in my lifetime. One time, I had the opportunity to perform with a brass choir in the Cathedral of St. Paul in St. Paul, Minnesota. Um, when you play brass instruments in a space like that, it's amazing that the sound just reverberates through the entire large space, like for what seems like forever. 
And when I hear this story, I can't help but imagine the prophet Anna um, shouting out with praise to God in the middle of the temple and the sound of it just echoing throughout the whole space as she runs up to this young family and just starts gushing over the baby Jesus. I've been to several other cathedrals in my life, um, like the National Cathedral in Washington, D.C., uh, the Cathedral of Christ the Light in Oakland, California, even to a couple of the great European cathedrals like Notre Dame in Paris and St. Pierre's Cathedral in Geneva. I love visiting these big, dramatic churches. When you walk through the doors, you immediately start to feel so small just in, the, in that giant, vast, cavernous space inside of the cathedral. Um, the towering pillars draw your eyes up and the towering arches feel like they're up in the sky. There's these impressive stained glass windows that have light filtering into the vast sanctuary in this patchwork quilt of red and blue, green and yellow colors. Earlier this week, I was watching this TV show called Nova, and there was this episode about the people who built the cathedrals in Europe in the Middle Ages. They, um, I learned that there was this attempt to kind of create like a little piece of heaven on earth, this little slice of heaven here on earth when they built these cathedrals. They even used numbers from really famous building projects in the Bible, like Noah's Ark and the Temple of Solomon and the city of New Jerusalem in the book of Revelation. The churches were designed to give people an experience of the divine on earth. And you know what? Some of these cathedrals, they took hundreds of years to be completed. You know, it's amazing to think of like the great community effort it took in these cities to finish building a cathedral. You know, the people who imagined what it was going to be like, and they made all the plans and the designs for the cathedral, the people who laid the foundations, they often wouldn't even live to see it completed in their own lifetimes. Instead, the successive generations, um, they would have to pass it down to their children and their grandchildren to finish these huge projects. These children and grandchildren would have to always be looking back to the original blueprints, the original designs that were given to them by the people who first imagined the finished pro project. And in the story that we heard today in the gospel, we heard about Simeon and Anna, who had been waiting their whole lives for the Messiah. And now, Simeon finally gets to hold the Messiah in his arms and bless Jesus and his family. And the prophet Anna gets to praise God for the baby Jesus. Generations of God's people had been waiting and waiting for the Messiah, for the baby Jesus to come. And here, Simeon and Anna finally get to see him, a glimpse of heaven come down to earth. But do you know what? Not even Simeon and Anna got to see the full completion of God's design. Because baby Jesus eventually grows up and causes all sorts of holy mischief, forgiving sins, feeding the hungry, healing the sick, and eventually giving his lives for everyone on the cross and rising again from the grave. And even the people who experienced those things didn't get to see the whole plan either because Jesus tells us that someday he's coming back again. And you know, I think everyone finds themselves waiting for things in life. And I wonder, what are you waiting for right now? Right now, I think everyone's waiting for the end of the pandemic. Some of us are waiting for the chance to see family again or maybe to see our friends again. Uh, some of us might be waiting for summer or for the end of the school year, or for the weather to warm up. Sometimes we're just waiting to discover what God's plan is for our lives and what God has next for us, his designs for us. Um, one of the amazing parts about Christmas, about this Christmas season, is that we get a glimpse, a little glimpse of God's plan for the world. God reveals God's self to us in the most unexpected of ways as a little baby a tiny, vulnerable, fussy, probably smelly, adorable baby. And just like the people who built these giant cathedrals had a plan and a blueprint that they kept looking back to, God has a plan for our lives 
and for our world. And we might not get to see the whole thing right now, but all that we're asked to do is to look back at these plans and these designs, this blueprint for the world that God shows us in Jesus, in this little baby who's come down to earth. Plans that build on the firm foundation of God's grace, with strong, reliable pillars of our faith, like loving God with all our hearts and loving our neighbors as ourselves. And we just do our best to partner with God in this world, this great construction project that God has for us as we seek God and serve others in the world. So while we wait, just like the prophet Anna waiting in the temple for years and years, we look back to God's faithfulness and God's promises to us because we know that even now, we can only see a part of God's plan for us. But someday, we will see the completion of God's design. Amen. Let us boldly confess our faith through the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate of the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and became truly human. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church, we acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Joining our voices with the song of the angels, let us pray for the church, the world, and all who are in need.
Night and day, all creation praises you, O God. Strengthen your church across nations, denominations, and traditions. Fill us with wisdom and unify our proclamation of your forgiveness and mercy. Hear us, O God. Your, your mercy, mercy is great. All creation is holy to you, O God. You cause the earth to bring forth its shoots and gardens to spring up. Protect hibernating animals in frozen lands that wait earnestly for longer days of awakening and growth. Hear us, O God. Your, your mercy, mercy is, is great. great. The nations are upheld by your hand, O God. Cause righteousness and praise to spring forth, inspiring leaders to serve with compassion and integrity. Send your spirit of discernment upon legislatures grappling with complex decisions for the sake of the common good. Hear us, O God. Your, your mercy, mercy is great. Send the spirit of your Son into our hearts, O God. Come quickly to hearts that race with fear, hearts that break with grief, and hearts that long for wholeness. Remember those names in our hearts this day that we may now choose to say silently or out loud. Wes, Pam, Carly, Jeannie. Reveal to us your power to heal and to save. Hear us, O God. Your mercy, mercy is great. God of mercy, come quickly to us with grace upon grace as we lift these and all our prayers to you in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you always. And also with you. Let's share a sign of peace with those around us and text someone or call someone right now and let them know Christ's peace be with you. David, peace be with you. Peace be with you. Peace be with you. Peace be with you. Today we heard about how Simeon and Anna get a glimpse of the fulfillment of God's plan for the world when they get to meet the Messiah, baby Jesus. Simeon and Anna praise God for revealing God's plan for salvation for the world. Your giving helps this church to partner with God's plan for salvation, looking to God's blueprints for our lives and for the world as we seek to serve God, as we seek God and serve others. Thank you for your continued generosity. Let us pray. Gracious God, you came to us as one unknown, bringing joy and salvation to the earth. Nourish us at your banquet table, that with all who welcome your birth, we may proclaim your peace, revealed in Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. 
Praise and thanks to you, holy God, for by your word you made all things. You spoke light into darkness, called forth beauty from chaos, and brought life into being. By your word you called your people Israel to tell of your wonderful gifts, freedom from captivity, water on the desert journey, a pathway home from exile, wisdom for life. Through Jesus, your word made flesh, you speak to us and call us to witness forgiveness through the cross, life to those entombed by death, the way of your self-giving love. Send now your spirit of truth, O God, rekindle your gifts within us, renew our faith, increase our hope, and deepen our love for the sake of the world in need. Faithful to your word, draw near to all who call on you, through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. For your word of life, O God, we give you thanks and praise. Gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, let us pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial, and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. Almighty God, who sent the Holy Spirit to Mary, proclaimed joy through the angels, sent the shepherds with good news, and led the Magi by a star, bless you this day, through Christ the Word made flesh. Amen. Go in peace, share the gift of Jesus. Thanks, Thanks be to God.